Now, I know this is a friend of yours, Randy, and I hate to speak ill of people, but this man here should not hold a portfolio that he's holding. This is a man always by a ground, always got a camera by a ground. He walking, you know, on the grass, he's super down, he bowing down. And some of the reports this morning out of the CPL and some other sporting activities happening where you are, Randy, in yeah. the 592, some of the reporting leaves much to be desired. If I was Charles this morning, I'd just go and hand in my resignation. Perhaps he's good at something else. Something, maybe law or something. Something else he's good at. <laughs> but this minister of sports thing, uh-uh. Uh-uh. So, uh, you, you know, it's no secret. I don't think it's, it's, it's any secret that um, this particular individual uh, didn't want this portfolio in the first place. Um, you know, I think everybody understood um, very clearly that it seems as though he was given this position as a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> To him or the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> him or the seems, rest of us? It seems as though, you know, it is a punishment for us also. But, I mean, you know, I know we'll get into the details, but the general sense is um, that this particular minister is more concerned with, 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 with the show, with the, with the pictures, with, with the Facebook posts. Um, mm -hmm. Because there are a number of... Uh, serious issues plaguing our sport and our sport sporting landscape that are not being dealt with you know and you, of course as usual with this government we we see um a plastering of um posts and, and a whitewashing of things that are happening under the surface and it is that reluctance to deal with the issues that are really affecting us and just whitewashing it and glossing it over that is causing all the problems going down the road Right, correct is right. It is 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 quite interesting to watch this play out. Correct is right, and it's, and it's been a lot of problems, folks. There are um, a, a huge scandal happening currently, where sporting is concerning in our country. Mm -hmm. As you folks would know or should know, or maybe do not know, but we'll tell you this morning. CPL, you know, the finals is being played in Guyana, and mm -hmm. folks, the comments about the preparation. But these finals have been scathing. And I want to reflect on a few of them this morning. And this is not out of the, um, what is the newspapers where you are, Randy, in the PNCR? It is not the... It's, it's not the new it's nation. nation. <laughs> it's not the key from the AFC. This is credible sources, other credible sources. This morning's editorial in Sabbath News is a must read. And they have captured it in a way, only Guyanese can. A lick and a promise. <laughs> now, when you hear that phrase, it's a lick and a promise. You know the whole book already. You know the whole book. And that is yeah. what Sabbath News is saying about the preparation to host the CPL games. It was a lick and a promise. In its editorial this morning, it says, The state of the national stadium has not escaped the eyes or the fingers of the attendees at the Republic Bank CPL matches over the last week. They have taken to social media platforms to lay bare their thoughts and feelings on the washrooms and, uh, and the quick fixes on various infrastructures around the stadium. Randy, this thing didn't happen to me yeah. overnight. We didn't wake up the morning before and realize we're hosting the CPL, you know, with yeah. a viewership of over five hundred million around the world or did we or did we Randy? but sure we knew that we were hosting this thing a year My ago God. two years ago you know and so <laughs> I, I i think the 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 title of the the editorial is quite quite up right a lick um, and a promise yep 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 a lick and a promise well folks as sabbath news said took to social media the day before the games were scheduled to be played, Sabbath News reports in this editorial this morning, Ramsey was seen as for normal, a camera in his face, and he yes. had the drums there. He came live from a washroom at the stadium. <laughs> Jesus Lord. Live from a washroom. You know, your friends wake up saying he was a barrel wrong. He was in a washroom live, <laughs> Ramson. And heard and was heard instructing staff. Fix this bike tonight because the game is tomorrow. Fix this by tonight. 
You see, they like this kind of pomposity, instructing the night before the game, fix this, the day before the game, fix this by tonight. And here in Sabacuse is talking about these quick fixes. Gloss over. Yep, they glossed over some of it. In mm. addition to that, folks, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> in addition to what transpired by the stadium, the Lady Jags. Wow. The Lady Jags, you know the Golden Jags? The female team, the Lady Jags, they had a match at Lenora. That other stadium over there against the Bahamians. Folks, sweet Jesus, it's three years we in. Who they can blame? All of them millions we are appropriating for sports through the National Assembly, through the national budget from Island Gas, we given to sports. Who they can blame now? Randy, hear what Stabuk News said about what transpired there. Charles Ramson, in this same editorial, this morning, don't take our words for it. It's not a new nation, it's not a key. I know what the WPA got for their um their <laughs> magazine. I can't remember the name of it. Sabak News says a lick and a promise. The national coach says the pitch at Lenora, right? He compared it as a horrible pitch. His words, come to Sabak News, horrible to the beautiful one that Guyana just played on in Antigua. Wow, wow. Right? Of all places where there is hardly any rainfall. In Antigua, Shabazz, this is the coach, compared Lenora to the beautiful pitch. It was so bad. Horrible pitch. That's how we describe the one at Lenora. And lamented, this is Shabazz, lamented, Jamal Shabazz, lamented that he could only dream of a day when Guyana would have a proper surface to play on. Shabazz went on as far as to suggest that we should play our home games away from this totally unacceptable state of affairs until wow. it can be rectified. Wow. So you got one horror, and Sabak News said this. While, I, I want to quote what Sabak News said. Basically saying, while one travesty was unfolding at Providence, this other horror show was happening at Lenora. Thanks to Charles Ramson. Randy? My God, you know, Sharon. I, I I want to. I want. Let, let let's unpack here. Let's unpack. Unpack it, Randy. <laughs> let's unpack because we need to put everything in context, and and we need to start with this this realization and understanding that we are living in an oil economy, right? We are living in 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 a Guyana where we've had three years of this government spending our oil money. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's just start with that. That's that. That's a framework. You're living in an economy where they 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 don't miss an opportunity to jump on the stage and say it's the fastest growing economy. Yeah. Biggest budget. Yeah. High biggest income inst investment. All of these things you're hearing. Every time you open up the newspapers, you're seeing another oil fine. So yeah, there's no complaint. There is. There and is every budget is the biggest budget ever, bigger than the right. one before. Right. Right. And so we have the, 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 the framework, mm -hmm. right? The framework that there is money available. And so there should be no excuse. And now let's let's take it a little further. And I and I, I note the other day we were on a radio program, myself and, and MP Amanza was in this area. She noted that after the car um ran into the, the fountain area, that you know the show peace, right? It was repaired so fast, right? So quickly. They move with great alacrity to repair that. Whilst things like these are being left behind. Now, <laughs> there is a National Sports Commission headed by um, Kashithias. You know, the friend. The National Sports Commission. The National Stadium has a as a body that 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 is supposed to run it the providence no, sorry not the providence the, the lower stadium has a staff it has a manager these people are supposed to be doing their jobs now let's juxtapose that with the minister 
responsible for sports, right? Running about, taking out pictures, and our national um, football players, female team, have to go on a play on a pitch that the coach would suggest, look, it's best we play with matches somewhere else. Imagine that. Imagine that. So when you take everything in totality, it is what we it is, it is unacceptable that that is happening. Because first we start with the fact that we have money. If we have money, then what is the excuse? It is just incompetence. It is just the fact that they do not care. It's just the fact that they all they all they're playing for is you know the publicity game. And you, the reality of this shirt is that if you do not do your job, then the bad publicity comes back to bite you. So if you're gonna run around and just take pictures and pretend like if we're doing something and and, and whitewash everything, eventually things like these happen. Because the actual work on the ground, pun intended, the actual work on the ground is not being done, right? If it is that this minister sat down and said, listen, we have the, the, the cricket carnival coming, you know, this is our show, peace thing. One Guyana cricket carnival, one Guyana consort this. We are going to be um, scrutinized to the T. Let us ensure that the ground work is done, right? Let us ensure that when the international players come in to play our team, that we, we that we put them to play on a, on a facility that is it, it is world class. Because you know what? Going back to what where I started, we have the money. So I don't know if anybody out there could probably give us an answer, but all I, all I put it down to Sharon is incompetence. It is um, lack of care. It is the fact that they 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 in the person at the top, because at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, the box stops with the minister. The box stops with the minister. Correct, if we correct had, Andy. Had, correct. Had the, 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 the interest of sport and our sport, men and women at heart, these things would have never happened. These things, are, because he would have called on the resources. He would have called on the resources available to say, hey, let us not embarrass ourselves again. And I say again because it's been happening over and over. But you have to have situations like this where we are embarrassed daily because the powers that be are more concerned with the Facebook posts. And that's the reality of what we have in Guyana. That is the reality. Yeah, There's so no while we see Charles Ramson on a daily basis, he had some ground walking around, looking yes. around, stooping down, bending down, bending over, bending over backwards, bending over forwards. In all of these positions to get a photograph, mm -hmm. the providence is not working. The one at Lenora is not working. Nope. And as Habit News pointed out for us, a number of persons took to social media. Yes. Right? Moen Gafur was one. Randy Walker's through some of what Moen Gafur may have said man. in his post. This is not at new AFC. We even know the man has a political affiliation. The man went exactly. to the game and he went to the stadium right. and he vexed and he took to social media. And, and Sharon, the things that he outlined are basic things. Basic things that if you are serious about, about what you are doing, if you are serious about your role as a minister, then you would ensure that these things are, are taken care of. The man spoke about coming into the stadium, the car passes, right? The area that you had to park your vehicle was just loom, right? Then he went on, he said, there is no running water, no running water in the red stand, the men's room. Same thing you were outlining just now, right? Water leaking from the stands into the ground floor. The man said right? he hoped it was water that was leaking. You hope. <laughs> Sherry, this, this, these are basic things that we have we, we continue to embarrass ourselves with right Masi had to um walk through what seemed like a natural disaster area completely flooded right he assumed it was, was it was melting ice right and a number of other issues i, I think there's another there's another um there's a, there's more to, to what he what, what he, he, he posted there right but these are the issues that our, our the, the, the people that going to the stadium are facing. Again, Sharon, I mean, 
persons will go and look at this, right? Um, they will see the person's name and they can read it out. But what, what I want to impress upon us is that these things ought not to happen. It ought not to happen because we are, we are in a position where we can afford for this. And I want to, I want to, to, to bring something into the fore. You may notice that a number of the, uh, the CPL teams are named after IPL teams, right? And this is something that people do not realize. Those teams have been sold to IPL teams, the Knight Riders, the Trin, you know, Trinbago Knight Riders. It, it, it wasn't the Knight Riders before. They've been bought by the Knight Riders from CPL, the Kings, you know, a number of the teams. The reality of what is happening here and this even more so the minister of culture Youth, and sport and this government should ensure that the facilities and the, the, the things available at the national stadiums are, are a, number one because the reality is that Guyana is the only team that is still owned by the by the country and so what we have is a CPL and, and the reality and the, the reason for this is but that Randy might as well we just sell it out yeah, and let the people manage the thing privately because we aren't doing that good of a job based on what Sabak News mm -hmm. talked about this morning a lick and a promise based yeah. on what Moen Gafur said on social media along with thousands of Guyanese here is an event attracting mm -hmm. a viewership of we said over half a, a, a billion worldwide yes they are on the world stage what other opportunity do you have, you know, to show how you govern, to show what you can do, and again and again and again, we keep coming up short. Yeah, Randy. So you got the madness that happened at Providence. Uh -huh. Total chaos and confusion powder. Nonsense happening in at the And you know what? As the good book says, when all these things happen, it's not the end, you know. That's what the good book says. It's the beginning. Of the but end. You, know, you see, it's in addition to that, recently there was an article that, uh, that 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 from the Athletics Association saying that the nationals, you know, trials couldn't be done, couldn't be held because there was no available ground. Right, the Lenora Stadium wasn't it wasn't uh, um, available. The police ground wasn't available. The um I. And Ghana ground wasn't available. And those were the, the three proper 400 grounds that you could, could hold your um, athletics at, your, 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 your um, nationals, for your national athletes to try to see if they get their time so they can make time for these international meets. Of course, the, the Providence Stadium, right? The, the touted Providence Stadium that was built under the SPBP government, who I keep saying lack foresight cannot hold a 400 ground in there and this and when it was being built we highlighted this problem that if you're going to build a national stadium it should be multi-purpose we should be able to hold our national athletics yes no but you know what we had to go to nora next to next to with the minister of, of um housing living to put the state put to put a 400 track over there but we have a national stadium that cannot be used for international meets because it, it you can't put a 400 track in there. Imagine that. And so we had a situation where the, the athletes had nowhere, they had nowhere to hold their, their, their meet to see if they, they can qualify for these international, make these international times. And this again is clear feeling, clear feeling of, 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 of on, on a lack of foresight and any sort of strategy when it comes to the development of sports in Guyana. Chen, I will ask a question. Yeah. And, and, and it's a two-part question. What has happened with the national sports policy? Right? Where is the national sports policy? Full display, policy? Randy. It's a full, you're watching the policy on full display because as you talk about that, Randy, mm. there's not the end, you know. Mm. I like what the good book says. It's the beginning <laughs> of sorrows. Because, because the Guyana Football Federation Run out this morning, and not for good reason. <laughs> the Ghana Football Federation has oh been fined by CONCACAF, and I'll tell you why. 
You ask why Pamela Dover, Van Van Classic, Raffle Glasgow, I'm happy you ask. I will tell you why. <laughs> Folks, Mr. Ford of the Guiana Football Federation, Wayne Ford, you think it's one thing happening in this country? <laughs> it's the beginning of sorrows. Look at you. Look at this sports policy on display. Huh? The Lady Jacks again. Has this match against Dominica, a qualifier, right? And it will be played in, in Barbados. Barbados. Yep. Why, you may ask? Why? Why? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Conquer Camp said, this is going to win. Ford. When they visited the venue two days prior to the Bahamas game and inspected the top. They immediately informed us that the venue, but more so the surface, was not suitable for this level of international game in Guyana. Wow. And that the game would have to would, would not be played there. After they informed us, they re, we relate to them. This is the GFF. We relate to them that uh, we were that there were no other suitable venues in Guyana. This is the GFF. Saying all these venues managed by the PPP, billions being spent, Ramson spending billions on photographs as well of himself being taken out of these venues were not suitable. And this was and this was the only facility that we have access to. This is the one I, I think um somewhere over the river, Mercy. Lenora again. Mm. But they will, but they still wanted hold on, they still wanted to inspect. Wait, wait, folks. He told them this is the only venue we got. But Concacaf said, mm -mm. Concacaf, folks, this is the Confederation of North Central America and Caribbean Associations of Football. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, not so fast. We want to see the rest. <laughs> folks, this is like this sports policy and full display. Concacaf said, we want to see the rest to inspect them. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wayne Ford says, according to Stabrook News, right? Campaign Ghana, Ivlery, the national thanks there, the national training center locations were subsequently inspected by the regional officials of CONCACAF, but were ruled out. <laughs> as whole and Randy, whole and Rick, especially the Providence facility, which is currently a hive of construction activity, which would have impeded the ongoing work of the contractors <laughs> doing the look like, the province. You see, uh, the only other alternative was to abandon the game, right? That would have hurt Guyana and wasted significant resources. This is what Ford said. And so the late decision was to have this, this match now move out of country. You see, he revealed, this is way in Ford, that the GFF was subsequently fined 5,000 US dollars for the quality of the playing surface at Lenora, despite them not being in control of the facility. Yep. Yeah. That that there, what you, you just described is, is in to put it in your turn, confusion powder. <laughs> confusion powder again comes back to the reality that we have a minister in place that is not even a square peg in the wrong hole he's a square peg in a square peg can't fit you know after a while square peg if you push it enough it can fit in the wrong hole <laughs> but it cannot work because there is no strategic approach to developing sports in Guyana. And when I say this, Sharon, I, I, I am um, I'm speaking not only about putting money into to something, but outlining how these organizations and federations work with each other. And what you mentioned there at the end is quite instructive, that the GFF got no control over this facility, right? There is a situation where the GFF basically at the mercies of whoever running that facility they're being fined for that facility because 
there is no again strategic and structural approach in showing hey these things must work properly how is it that we are supporting the gff to ensure that the gff has access to a facility that our players can 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 host international meets it does it isn't happening because there is no thought being put into that there is no thought you know shared what is interesting is that if it is that Kashif is at the National Sports Commission, he's the chairman of the, 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 the National Sports Commission. This is a man who has spent his entire life in football. This is a man who has made his money from football. You would think that these are the people who know how to manage these things, but they can't seem to manage their way out of a paper bag at the moment. Because we but rather you you hit the nail on the head, you get the answer to the problem right there. Is that the only focus on making money, right? Maintaining facilities and you know internationalizing these facilities and so on. It's not the aim. It's what you need for us. Once you get something, people say on. You see, that is the aim. It's not how the athletes are treated. It's not the quality of experience for the patrons and all of those lofty things. Is how much we can make for ourselves. You see, how much kickbacks we can make. Why is Cliff Anderson Sports Hall not a consideration for some games? When construction, reconstruction, rehabilitation started since the year start, mm. they come back and ask for $90 million more on top of what they already had. Because so it's man, a big, this is happening in sports in this country. It's and a big scam. We want to sanction the minister with responsibility. Yeah. I, I, I am convinced, Sherry, that, that um, Ramson is in over his head. Uh, you know what is interesting? If we are to Randy, assume... That, Randy, hold on. Let me add on. here. Because I know you all want to say it. Yeah. He is focused on the wrong things. He is focused on who in a play on the cultural center stage that, <laughs> talk, that, that, that had some criticism for him or his wife. He is focused on the wrong things. Let me say it for you. <laughs> right well, you, 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 well, you, you hit the, the, the nail on, on the head there. Uh, but, you know, what is interesting, Chair, is if, I, if I'm to go back to where I started, where it is publicly known that this man didn't want this position. Let me, let me go in, let me dig in a little bit. And he, he, he was eyeing another position, uh, maybe uh, natural resources or something like that. If he had to use his tenure as Minister of Culture and Sports as an audition to say, look, I can manage. How, how can the powers that be in the BVP say, hey, Ramson, I, I think you did well here. Hold on, hey, hold on, hold on um, uh, quote unquote, bigger portfolio. How? If you can manage some grounds and some cultural events, right? If you, if you can't do that properly, because... I don't know what else to say. Every year we hear the budgetary allocations for sport and you see a, a release, an obligatory re release coming out from the NSC saying, yes, this money will help to improve and develop sports in Guyana. Where? Three years of oil money. Where? And we have the Athletics Association suffering because they, they, they can't hold their, their meets anywhere. The Football Federation paying money because they, they can't the services are terrible guyana having to host their home game in another country right they come in come me and me monthly come invite you yeah, let me bring some black belly black belly um sheep and and, and goat and thing and and let me have a nice time and talk about how guyana really developing and let the, let, let the, the president go on stage and dance up but at the surface Facilities are not being maintained. There is no coordination between these agencies. There is no, no sort of development plan. And this is not even the national sports uh, policy. But generally, what is it? What is the direction you want to take our sports in? I often say, Sher, that you don't need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to sports. You know, There is a country right next to us in the Caribbean that has, has shown us over the years how it should be done. All we need to do is to figure out what in the world Jamaica is doing. Let us go look at the framework, look at the policies, look at the steps they have taken since 1976. 
and let us start to implement some of those things here. But you know what? We're too big for that. We're too big for that. And, I, and I'm finding... certain, Randy, when you survey that framework, mm -hmm. one of the things you will see is proper functioning facilities for the athletes to play and to practice, to practice and to play. It's a holistic approach. One of them is that coordination with agencies, um, a proper guiding policy that allows for investment from corporate, right? And so you have a holistic approach to developing sport. It's not a piecemeal thing because this government is a piecemeal government. And, and Ramson is in the same vein. Huh? You jump up, oh, we start the football academy. Where, where is where is football academy really really going but, on, on on the turf that the people can play on? And Randy, so, if this was the only scandal we were facing this morning, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, they might want to fight this Ramson alone. But you got other scandals that we're dealing with in the national headlines today. And you know the folks watching us, if you all in share the live yet, you're wicked. You like them, right? Sure, before, before you move from sport though, right ahead. I want to bring to the attention of the public something that is going to rear its head again mm -hmm. because we are, in, we are in a season of school sports, right? And there is a there is a problem that has occurred a number of years. And again, there is no coordination between the Ministry of Education, and the Ministry of Culture and Sport, the, the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development, to ensure that our school grounds are in any shape or form to facilitate these things. These schools have to be running and try and book a few, they've got like four or five facilities in Georgetown that can actually hold school sports. And so you have, you know, dozens of schools running. It's a, it's a logistical nightmare, right? And so I am saying as a government, as a, as, a, as a ministry of culture and sport and the ministry of education, we have a responsibility to our student athletes to ensure that at least they can hold it into house sports in, at, at their, their, their facility that they have at their schools. And there is no, let me point this out, there is no coordination between these ministries. Ministry of education tell you that they don't, they don't take care of school grounds. Culture and sport, the two ministers don't talk with one another. Right, I know they like one another, what, but there's no coordination, no effort to ensure that hey, what is happening with our student athletes, our school sports, and so that left up in the air. And I wanted to bring that to the attention of the people because when you walk around George, now you see these schools and you see these grounds, and it's you know, it's, it's best to give them some paintball and then they do jungle training in them. That, that's that's what it is, and so that is another key issue where we've seen the feelings of, 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 of these people that they put in position as ministers. I just needed to point that out. Correct is right, Randy. And you know, if you're not taking care of those things at the national level, mm -hmm. you have a CPL, um, international games that are being played on home turf, and yep. you're not taking care of that. I think you'll be taking care of the school grounds where CONCACAF don't have to inspect and <laughs> CPL <laughs> officials will have to inspect and so on. I don't think you can be taking um, you can be taking time with that. Right? Yeah. I don't think so. So while we're on that front, folks, there are other things we're dealing with too. We got other scandals we're dealing with too. 